In the past couple of videos, we have learned some really cool LangChain features like prompt templates, few shot learning, PAL chains, and API chains. Today's video takes that learning a bit further. We're going to implement RAG with LangChain. RAG is basically retrieval augmented generation. The easiest way to explain you this is let's say you have a document like a Word doc or a PDF doc, and you want the LLM to answer specific questions related to that PDF. That's when you will use RAG. Now, LLMs are trained on public data. And if you have a document you just created and you want to create a chatbot that answers questions specific to that document, you can use RAG. And LangChain enables us with loads of features that help us implement RAG. By the way, RAG has a lot of applications. Let's say you're a company and you want to create a customer support chatbot that replies based on your company and customer policies. All you have to do is give it your company and customer policy documents and it'll be able to answer any queries. Let's say you're a doctor and you want your patients to be able to get medical care at home without you being available. So you just have to give a couple of books to your LLM and it'll be able to answer many questions easily. And if you're a government agency and you want the citizens to be able to access any information easily, you can build chatbots with those government documents where the documents stay safe at the back end. Or let's just say you're studying physics because you have an exam next week. You can just give your entire book to an LLM and ask it questions and it'll answer those questions for you from the book. And that's a great, great way to learn and study for the exam because it'll be fun. Now you need to store this document somewhere and the data also needs to be easily searchable and that's where we use vector databases. But to be able to store this in vector databases, you need to perform some operations on the data. So RAG is basically a five step process. Loading the data set or the document, splitting the data set into smaller chunks, storing the data in a vector database, retrieving the data and generating a nice human readable verbose answer based on the retrieved data. Now we'll go over code file and the link to this Colab file will be in the description of this video. Make sure you create a copy of it so you can access it later. We start off by importing OS and then setting our OpenAI API key. In the next section, we load our data set, which basically contains list of cavities. And then we print out this data and you can see this in the output. The entire data set has been printed. The next step is splitting the data into chunks for easier processing. So for this, we import the tick token library, get our encoding for our model, which is GPT 3.5 Turbo. So why do I use GPT 3.5 Turbo when we have GPT 4? Because whenever you're making a test project or a POC, use a smaller model, they're faster and way cheaper. And once you have built the project, you can switch it to the higher model when going into production. All right, so I get the CL 100K base encoding, which is compatible with my GPT 3.5 Turbo. Then I define a function to calculate the token length of a given text and it accepts the text as a parameter and the encoded part becomes available to us in the tokens variable after using tokenizer.encode and we return the length of the tokens. In the next line you see we're passing some text to this function and in the output we get the length of the tokens in this text which is 15. Now that we have the encoded and tokenized text we can easily split it. So in the next section we import the recursive character text splitter and we create our text splitter with chunk size 100 which is how big each of our chunks will be and we set our overlap as 20 which is the number of characters overlapping between consequent sentences and for the length function we use our tick token length function that we created in the previous cell in the next cell we finally use our text splitter to split our document and we pass our data set in it and then we find the length of the chunks we get 37 this means that from our data set we were able to create 37 total chunks of size 100 each so now that we have our chunked data set we have to store it as vector embeddings in a vector database for the vector database, we will be using ChromaDB and to be able to generate embeddings from this tokenized data, we will be using a sentence transformer model and using hugging face embeddings. Now, if you're not sure what embeddings are and why you need them, you definitely need to check out the LLM concepts playlist on this channel. This playlist has all the concepts required to understand the projects that we are building. And all these projects, including today's video, will be available in the Gen AI and LLM projects playlist. So we start off by importing hugging face embeddings from LangChain embeddings. We set our model name, which is a sentence transformer model and the arguments for our model, which is just one. And that's device is equal to CPU, meaning we want to use our CPU to run this and our encoding arguments where we mentioned that we don't want to normalize our embeddings. So we create our hugging face embeddings next. Now keep in mind that this will be handy when we store this in ChromaDB. All right, so next we import Chroma from LangChain vector stores. So what you're seeing here is that just like you're able to select any LLM from LangChain and easily work with it, the same is true for vector databases. Pretty cool, right? 
Then we pass our chunks and HF, which is our hugging face embeddings into ChromaDB. And this is available in the vector DB variable now. And using this, we perform a similarity search in the next cell where we search for bleeding gums and you get all possible matches from the chunked data that we had created from our data set. And that's now stored in our vector DB. The final steps are retrieval and generation. So we import retrieval QA chain from Langchain, which will allow us to ask questions to our LM and the LM will use the chunked data from the vector store and answer these questions for us. So in essence, we are chatting with our data in a way and we also import chat open AI. Now we set our LLM as GPT 3.5 Turbo with temperature as 0.6 and next we create our QA chain by passing our LLM and our vector DB retriever. And this is now available to us in the variable QA chain and in the next line we are passing a query to our QA chain and the query is how can I prevent cavity in my tooth and you get a detailed answer in the output and this is all coming from our data that we had fed it essentially. And then we ask it another question what is enamel decay and we get another comprehensive result with very clear instructions. So I found this pretty cool that you can have a very specific use case with your own unique data set and use the LLM to chat with that data set and get answers to your questions and Langchain makes this possible. This is how you create industry specific and company specific chatbots. I hope you enjoyed this little project. We're basically building up our skill set for the Langchain agents project that I'll post in a couple of days and it'll be very difficult for me to explain that project if you don't have a solid understanding of Langchain basics and concepts and it's important features and this is why I'm creating a few Langchain basics videos first. Now a quick word for the sponsor of this video which is you. Yes you heard that right you are the sponsor of this video because this channel doesn't have any sponsorships or partnerships right now and it's completely dependent on you sharing this content with your friends and also liking this video and commenting on it. Since this channel is really small and caters to a very niche audience it doesn't get picked up by the algorithm easily. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to join our discord community where we hang out and talk about cutting edge tech. The link for this is in my YouTube profile. All right, I'll see you in the next video.